Hi, my name's Colby and you are watching one of my 10 minute tutorials. Here is our 10 minute tutorial for today. I am going to show you how I make this watercolor misty forest. Okay, in this 10 minute tutorial, we are going to learn how to paint this um, misty forest, which as you know, if you follow, if you followed any of my videos or follow me on Instagram, misty forests are kind of my jam. So I'm excited to do this today. I found this photo on Unsplash, which is um, a community like a site for photographers where they can upload their photos and anybody is allowed to use them for free. So I like to go to Unsplash when I'm getting reference photos for tutorials because they are royalty free. So thank you, Joaquim Honkasalo for letting us use this photo today. We are going to break down painting this misty forest into just a few steps first. We are going to paint the base layer for the sky, which is going to be a gradient, a subtle gradient from dark to light. That's going to be our first layer. And second, we are going to paint three layers of trees. So the first layer is this really light layer in the background. And then the second layer is the um, a gradual, a slightly darker layer. And then the third layer is this darkest layer and then we'll be done. So without further ado, let's get started on layer one. So we have taped down our paper and now let's start with the gradient sky. So I'm going to take some clean water and just paint with clean water all across this paper right here. Once we have the whole thing wet, we're going to create a gradient that is dark at the bottom and light at the top. So that means we're going to start at the bottom and I'm going to be using Windsor & Newton's Payne's Gray for my Misty Forest. So I am starting at the bottom and I'm going from edge to edge, one edge of the paper to the other. Masking tape makes this handy because I don't have to worry about where my lines are. And I'm just going up the paper. Remember about gradients and watercolors, you can always make something darker if your paint wasn't quite dark enough. You can always add more, but it's significantly more difficult to make something lighter once it's already dark. Get the bottom about I mean, get the top about as light as you think you want it to be, which if we're following our reference photo from Unsplash should be almost white, right? Um, so we basically just want it to be like almost like it's a tint, tinted of this Payne's Gray. Once we have the sky as light as we want it to be, then we can start adding even darker, more pigmenty um, strokes at the bottom. And the fun thing about this part is we don't need it to be a very smooth gradient toward the bottom. We kind of want it to have a cloudy kind of effect, partly because the paint that kind of clouds up along the horizon or whatever right here could, you know, feasibly look like trees in the distance. And um, we're also kind of, the paint is also acting like mist almost. It's doing the job, it's serving its purpose by creating clouds of mist. So, and then to make something a little cloudy, a little mistier, the trick there is to just add more water. So I've once I've added the paint, I'm just going to wash off my paintbrush and then add a few taps of clean water to, to add some texture to this misty part and make it look a little 
more cloudy and misty like I'm trying to mimic with the reference photo. So, all right, now on to layer two. So now that this layer is dry, we are going to paint our second layer, which starts with a faint layer of trees. So in order to get a light layer of trees, like in this photo, so we're gonna start with this like very faint tree layer in the back. In order to get these light trees, we need to use light color, right? So, and we want this to be monochrome. So really we're just going to take some Payne's Gray on our palette and add water to it. Adding water changes a watercolor's value. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color without changing its chemical makeup. So instead of, if you add white to a color, it actually changes the, it changes the color as opposed to just changing the lightness or darkness. So the way to add, to make a, co a color truly lighter in watercolor is to add water. So I have this puddle of light Payne's Gray over here. And I'm just going to paint a few tallish trees. If you want to know how to paint trees, I have another like Misty Tree Line YouTube tutorial that goes over the basics, or I have some Skillshare classes um, where I dive into my techniques for painting these loose trees as well. Or you can just watch me and try to mimic what I'm doing, which is how I learned. Experimenting and mimicking is how I learned to paint at all. <laughs> I'm self-taught watercolor artist. So I am not going to paint a whole line of trees necessarily because that's not what this reference photo is. I'm also uh, not going to pay too much attention to how particularly the background trees are formed because we're not really gonna see them that much once the actual painting is finished. The background trees are really there to add depth and complexity to this scene. So that's what the layers are for, to give the illusion, even though we're painting, you know, a 2D painting, it's gonna give the illusion of depth like you're staring into a deep forest or valley. Okay, so I painted five trees in the background and now I'm gonna let this dry and paint the next layer. So my first layer of trees is dry and now we're going to paint the next layer and we're going to get our color by adding a little more pigment to this watery mixture that I already had in my palette. And so we're painting three layers of trees and this should be the mid color. And then the, the last layer is going to be the darkest, the darkest pigment that Paints Gray can be. So using this mid color, I'm going to paint even more trees. Make sure to add some variety to the sizes of your trees. You don't want them all to be the same size, otherwise that kind of looks, you know, boring. Um, and it's all too easy to accidentally make trees like this all the same size and all the same shape. That's something I had to kind of train my eye to do, is to, on purpose, not make the trees the same size. Um, so, you know, do it that what you will, but I will say, I think that forest lines like this look much cooler if the trees are different heights and, you know, different sizes to, like you can do a really full one or you can do 
a skinnier one like this. It's really up to you. It's just important to remember that in, in nature, there's no such thing as perfect. So building in imperfections, leaning into your own human error and making it part of the landscape really is actually going to make your piece even more realistic looking. Okay, now on to layer three, the third layer of trees. It's time for our last layer. So for this layer of trees, we are going to use the darkest pigment, the, the darkest our color can be, and you get that color by using as little water as possible when painting. So you still want it to be watery enough that it's not like chunky because we don't, I mean, you can have chunky watercolor if you want, but we still want it to be watery enough that it's, we can use it as watercolor, but not so watery that it dilutes the pigment. So we want, I love using Payne's Gray for these monochrome forests because Payne's Gray at its darkest can look so dark that it's almost black. And so I find it to be very ominous and perfect for misty forests just like this one. And voila, we have a monochrome misty forest. All right, not too shabby, right? So here's the misty forest. Here's the reference photo. The trees, you know, look a little different. Mine were, are mostly just my blobby style tree, but for the most part, looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. If you want to try and paint along with me, I would love to see it. So thanks for watching my tutorial and I will catch you next time.